Hi, my name is Dawn Good. I am a licensed social worker and I work for the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. I'm a clinical care coordinator there and I oversee our AOT program. Hi, my name is uh, Dupree Taylor and um, I work for Catalyst Life Services as a case manager and um, my role with the uh, assistant outpatient treatment program is I'm the assistant outpatient treatment liaison for Richland County Probate Court. Hi, I'm Michael Van Cleef. I'm AOT monitor with Hopewell Health Centers in Southeast Ohio. So my program is in Fairfield County, which is Lancaster, Ohio. Our program started in 2018, and currently we have about 29 participants. Yes, yeah, so I'm uh, the assistant outpatient tre uh, treatment liaison for uh, Richland County here in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, the program started in 2018, and uh, right now we have four four participants in the program. Uh, currently, I work with AOT programs in Athens and Gallia counties. Uh, in Athens County, we started about three years ago and currently have nine participants. Uh, Gallia County accepted its first case just shy of two years ago and currently has one participant. When someone is referred to AOT by our criminal legal system, um, the typical case goes that a decision is made internally um, by the prosecutor's office that a person has been found incompetent to stand trial and the plan is for their charges to be dismissed. The prosecutor then notifies me of their intent to refer the person. At that point, I can request a copy, copy of their competency evaluation and begin the evalu evaluation. Typically, we bring in our community mental health provider um, to assist with gathering all the historical information, including treatment and criminal history. Um, we reach out to the individual to try to um, discuss the uh, commitment and what's expected of a commitment per participant um, and really just establish some rapport. We always speak to the family if that's um, at all possible because they always um, are able to provide some great uh, collateral information. And then we get um, clinical appointments set if that's necessary. Uh, we only have five days to uh, from the filing to have a court hearing. When that happens, um, our board attorney submits a competency evaluation um, that was done by the court previously and requests a 90-day commitment. And that just allows us some extra time to continue the investigation and complete an assessment and ensure that a person is appropriate for the commitment. People that are referred through um, the criminal legal system are treated differently once they're in the AOT program. Um, there is a bit of difference in the beginning because we you typically use their competency evaluation um, to start that initial 90-day commitment. Um, and then from there, get the assessment and they fall into the program and um, are treated exactly the same as anybody else coming into the program. Yeah, so typically uh, it starts with an affidavit and from the uh, from the hospital. Um, the psychiatrist will, uh, you know, evaluate the patient and, and determine that uh, they, they would be, you know, they, they thought they were appropriate for, for assisting outpatient treatment. And then they would... Uh, send that affidavit over to uh, Richland County Probate Court uh, for review. Um, you know, once, once that was reviewed, they would also do what was called a, uh, a commit, uh, an, another second opinion from another psychiatrist at the, uh, at the hospital, um, you know, to, to, to just review the, to see if the person should be an AOT. Once that, that process is done, then they would, uh, the, Richland County Probate Court would then decide if they were going to have a hearing for uh, to get to have the person probated into the assistant outpatient treatment program, um, and then that will be done through Attorney Jerger, who is the uh, Richland County uh, Mental Health Board attorney, and then he would you know submit that process, and he would be the representative for Richland County Mental Health Board. Uh, the court would uh, assign a uh, an attorney for the uh, for the patient, the client, and uh, they would have a hearing uh, for a ninety day uh, commitment into assistant outpatient treatment program. Once a person a uh, person is uh, committed into ALT program, and uh, we we see it, you know that they're they're beginning to decompensate. Uh, what we would do is uh, we will write out paperwork um, and submit that to the psychiatrist. What we're seeing. Uh, 
and then the psychiatrist will re- review it also and probably, you know, also have some comment on, on the situation as far as what they've seen uh, during treatment or that uh, they observe also the decompensation. Uh, we would submit that then to Richland County Probate Court, um, and then they would uh, contact the sheriff department uh, to go have that person picked up uh, for to be evaluated. They would be, be brought to Catalyst for well for wellness screening and then determine if they need to be in the hospital. Uh, that paperwork would also say what the recommendation would be, whether that person should be uh, taken to the hospital, uh, either uh, Ohio Health Mansfield here, or if, if uh, the psychiatrist feels that that person should be uh, sent to a uh, Heartland Behavioral for further uh, evaluation and treatment. It's the Addiction and Mental Health Board um, outpatient treatment providers and um, our probate court work together to develop a process to accept referrals uh, from community members for AOT. Um, so when an individual is looking for assistance with a family member or loved one, um, they'll oft reach out to uh, our Adam board or myself directly, um, and we'll discuss AOT as a potential option. You know, if that seems like an appropriate route, uh, we'll gather collateral from the family, review treatment history if it's available, and if it seems like that individual may meet both statutory and clinical criteria for AOT, uh, we'll go ahead and schedule a psychiatric evaluation. At that psychiatric evaluation, will be determined definitively if psychiatrist believes that an individual meets criteria for AOT. They would then complete uh, both the affidavit of mental illness and a certificate of evaluation, and we file that directly with our probate court, who then goes ahead and schedules uh, their hearing um, to review evidence, psychiatrist testimony, and determine if the individual will be ordered to AOT. So if we find that someone's not appropriate for AOT that's been referred from the criminal justice system, we definitely have a, um, a follow-up conversation with the pro- prosecutor. We found that this is a really important discussion. Um, okay. It's an opportunity to educate on why um, they're not appropriate. And it really just improves our relationship um, between the two systems. Um, typically, we have not seen where the, the charges are refiled for any reason. Um, generally, that's a person that probably isn't doing well. They just don't meet the standards we set for our AOT program. So we do try to um, reach out and engage them um, and get them into services if we can at, at all costs. To keep the, the stakeholders involved and keep communication between uh, all of the parties uh, going, uh, we have a quarterly, Richland County has a, a quarterly uh, meeting uh, at the Richland County Mental Health Board. Um, and that meeting consists of Catalyst, uh, which is the treat the treatment agency, uh, Ohio Health Mansfield, uh, the Richland County Sheriff Department, uh, Richland County Probate Court um, is also there. So it's incredibly important to keep the referral source involved in the process as much as possible. Most often, these are family members. Uh, they are referring individuals that not only do they care about, but often they have already been acting as treatment providers for for some time. So as we move forward with an AOT process, you know, we keep them updated on scheduling of evaluations, uh, hearings as they're scheduled, and also provide information both on what they can expect from the legal process, um, what they could expect as far as like a timeline goes for AOT, and also what they could expect from their loved one during the process. At this time, NAMI is not involved as a shareholder in our programs. Um, However, we have had discussions with them uh, and have offered opportunities to be able to provide some education and develop a solid referral process for for their NAMI members. The dismiss and refer process process, um, to AOT can be beneficial, but it's not a fix-all. There um, still seems to be a lot of provider gaps, um, difficulty finding appropriately licensed people to assess, testify, and provide the services. There's a very strict 
timeline um, from the state. Um, and it's really difficult to find and lo locate and engage um, unhoused participants in short timelines. Folks that are appropriate for AOT are often distressful or don't believe they have a mental health condition. So the success of AOT happens very slowly. It's hard work um, to establish a relationship and build trust. And that just doesn't happen overnight. So I feel that there's some inappropriate expectations of AOT with the um, referral from criminal justice because it's not a punishment. AOT is um, not meant to be a probation system or and it doesn't really have any real consequences um, to non-adherent. Um, there's a funding bur burden to the Adam boards as well. They are the primary funder of these programs. So state and federal money really does need to be um, added in order to make the program robust and um, make it sure that it, it's able to address the unique needs of each person, especially those involved in the criminal justice system. When a referral comes from a community member, we may have a challenge in gathering information that actually um, backs up the claim that the individual is mentally ill, subject to court order. You know, we could gather collateral information from the family member, from the referral source, but we also need some treatment history, record of scheduled appointments, record of hospitalizations, record of crisis screens, to also kind of back that up from the treatment side. Not having access to that can definitely slow down the process. It makes it much more difficult to determine whether that individual has actually is has been unable to voluntarily engage in treatment or if they may not have just had the opportunity to do so. So once we determine that an individual appears to meet statutory and clinical criteria for AOT, We'll go ahead and schedule an evaluation with a psychiatrist that we have contracted just for the purpose of completing those initial evaluations for AOT. If an individual does not attend that scheduled evaluation, then the psychiatrist or referral source will write an affidavit of mental illness based off the information they have available. Um, and we will, utilizing our board's attorney, request that the court order that the respondent uh, attend an evaluation and though it is something we prefer not to do um, if necessary we can request that they be escorted by the police to that scheduled appointment with the cases that we've handled at this point uh, the sheer majority of them we have been able to get their evaluations whether by them coming in voluntarily or receiving an order to attend their evaluation and have been able to have their hearings before they required hospitalization. There has been a case where an individual during this process received new charges and had been incarcerated. In that case, we coordinated with uh, the trial court and uh, the prosecuting attorney while maintaining our process in probate so that we could keep up to date on what was going on in the case they had and to ensure a smooth transition into AOT once that case had been resolved. Uh, one, one barrier I, I would, you know, like to point out is uh, there's a lot of people that, that don't necessarily get go to the hospital but need the help. Uh, so that presents a barrier, but anyone can can um, anyone can can submit an affidavit to have someone go into uh, the assisted outpatient treatment program um, here in Richland County. So that can be a family member uh, can su can uh, submit an affidavit to risk to probate court uh, for an, uh, a person to be probated into the program. Um, that's where uh, NAMI plays a, a strong role in that. I, I failed to mention earlier, uh, NAMI also, they, they, uh, they facilitate our, our meetings. Uh, so they're also in that, um, in our quarterly meeting, um, they put out information to, uh, to the community about, you know, mental illness and that type of thing. And, uh, so they play a role in that. So that is, uh, one, 
one way that we get people probated into assisting outpatient treatment, but that the hospital piece uh, mainly being typically how we get people probated, but um, that one source can be a, uh, somewhat of a barrier if people aren't familiar with uh, how, to, how to start that process. We also have a problem just getting um, the education to the, the uh, attending provider that's in the hospital and getting them on board to um, assess and, and do the testimony that's needed um, for, for the commitment, the, for the hearing. When we're trying to get the education to the doctor, um, it's it's difficult to have a conversation with them. It's usually a go between um, between us and the social worker that's assigned um, in the hospital. Um, just staying on that frequent calls, um, frequent emails to send some written education and materials is often helpful. Um, so the doctor can look those over on their own. Sometimes there is a um, some difficulty in between what we're saying to the person um, and then what they're actually, the information they're actually giving to the doctor. Um, they're, they're very small timelines if a person's in the hospital in a very small um, window of communication um, between the social worker and the, the provider. So that does cause some hardship in trying to get someone on the, the commitment while they're in the hospital. I think keeping the communication lines open we often tend to work in silos um, in different systems and just educating people on what exists and what, what we're capable of and also our, our gaps in our system too. Um, that's the way we get things, the gaps closed and the program improved. I think it largely is that that outreach and communication with other providers who either may not be familiar with the AOT uh, or it's just kind of not registering that some of their working with may be appropriate for it. Yeah. Um, as much as possible, be involved in agency treatment teams, right? Listen in on uh, people struggling with individual cases. Yeah. Not all of those struggles are going to be appropriate for us to use a probate process for, uh, but some of them will be. Thank you for the opportunity to to share the uh, the referral process, the Richland County uh, probate course referral process into the assistant outpatient treatment program, but also giving me the opportunity to uh, to hear how other uh, counties do things uh, in in the respected areas, from from the criminal side of things, but also uh, to the community side. I appreciate the opportunity to share um, what we're doing here in Frank in Fairfield County. Um, and hear what others are doing. Um, I feel like TAC does a great job of bringing people together to collaborate and really problem solve, and, and that's very appreciated. We found that AOT um, is an incredibly successful tool that can be utilized to provide assistance to families uh, that are struggling with individuals with mental illness. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to discuss what we've learned. <laughs>